Today I want to compare a bunch of different off-the-shelf 60% gaming mechanical keyboards because this is a growing section of the market that has seen a lot of releases lately and I'm personally interested to see which ones are actually worth picking up. Now the big question of course is why even go 60% in the first place because for a lot of people it seems like a pretty big compromise. You don't have the function keys at the top and you lose the arrow keys at the bottom right which for normal use seems pretty vital. And a lot of it does come down to personal preference but especially when it comes to gaming 60% is so, so much better than full-size keyboard or TKL, especially if you're a competitive gamer and you often uh, position your keyboard in really weird ways. For example, if you're a try-hard esports gamer like myself and you use a angled keyboard position like this, 60% makes this so much more viable. You can kind of position it and angle it however you want. As for what makes a good gaming keyboard, generally we want something that feels really well-built, not rattly, clunky, or too loud. I also really appreciate lubed switches and stabilizers that are well-tuned, and ultimately keyboards that feel really close to that custom board experience. I'm also not really going to discuss the differences in RGB lighting between them. All of these keyboards have them, but of course they have their own differences and the software differences. Some of them might be better than others, but I'm not really interested in that personally. I'm a bit more interested in how these keyboards feel to use for gaming use. Uh, how do the switches feel? What are the stabilizers like? And how is the build quality differences between them? So let's start off with the Razer Huntsman Mini. And to be honest, this keyboard really, really surprised me. This comes with two switch options, a linear or a clicky switch. I have the linear model here and they feel super, super smooth. In fact, if you're just after a 60% keyboard with the smoothest typing experience out of the box, this is the best one on this list. Although one thing that Razer could have done to improve this even further would be to lubricate or dampen the wire that stabilizes each of the optical switches, because although this smoothness is definitely there, there is still a bit of rattle. Overall though, it's a pretty good typing experience and when it comes to the stabilizers, they feel okay too. Far from the best in this lineup, but also not the worst. Build quality, on the other hand, feels pretty good. It's a mostly plastic construction, but there is a top metal plate for some added weight, but also to make the bottoming out sound a little bit more solid. You've also got two additional height adjustment stands at the bottom, with the first setting being the most comfortable for me personally. Being a 60% keyboard, you'll have your function, media, and arrow keys on another layer, which is activated by the function key. And by default, this layer is actually illuminated when it's active, which I thought was a pretty neat touch. Keycaps are also double shot PBT, which are lightly textured, so no complaints here. Overall, a pretty neat board from Razer with the highlight definitely being those super smooth switches, but let's see what else is on offer. Next up is a recent addition from Asus, the Falcon. This is a 65% layout in the 60% form factor, so it's the only board in this lineup with physical arrow keys. You will pay for that though with shorter right shift, backspace, and enter keys, which do take some time to get used to. But this keyboard also has something else going for it, and that's a 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection with a battery life of up to 450 hours apparently. Uh, I did not validate that, I did not use it for that long, but what I can say is that using this keyboard in wireless mode, it feels like it's wired. It really does feel that good. I personally didn't experience any latency or wireless interruptions or anything like that. I'm not sure if we're at the point where I'd recommend using a wireless keyboard for competitive play, but at least in my experience, it is pretty damn good. Another unique feature here is the touch panel on the left hand side which is used for volume control by default but can be rebound to other functions like zoom through ASUS's Armory Crate software. It also displays the battery status by default which is nice and handy and honestly this touch panel is a pretty neat feature. I found myself using it a lot and I really appreciate when companies push for innovation in a really saturated market where let's be honest a lot of the products are so so similar. Unfortunately though some of the basics here of what makes a great gaming keyboard in my opinion have been overlooked. The switches, where you've got your choice of Cherry MX, are not lubed, so they feel okay, but bottoming out and topping out the switch is a bit loud. Then we have the stabilizers, where it feels like there has been zero consideration to tuning and making these feel actually good. These feel very rattly and loose.
And just like Razer, we have a two-piece case here, plastic on the bottom and metal on the top, and build quality feels about the same. Keycaps are double shot PBT, pretty gamery font, but no complaints. Overall, some really cool features here to get excited about, although I find it lacks a really solid foundation, and it is the most expensive keyboard in this lineup too, at $150. And then we have the GMMK Compact from Glorious, which I personally had high hopes for because it is a Glorious product, and Glorious typically, you know, push the boundaries a little bit and do things quite different to other brands. And we do have a very different feature set here. It is hot swappable, which is really good. But again, the foundations of what I'm personally looking for when it comes to a great gaming keyboard have been a little bit overlooked. Firstly, let's get to the good stuff. Hot swappable, which means that you can easily swap out the switches and replace them with pretty much whatever you want. You can also buy the GMMK Compact as a blank base where you then add in your own switches and keycaps. And of course, that is cheaper than the full keyboard. That's basically what I'd recommend if you're interested in this board. Get the GMMK blank, add in some lube switches and the keycap set of your choice. Because being hot swappable, that is really the main advantage over the other boards on this list. I would say that the stabilizers are about the same as the Razer Huntsman Mini in terms of rattle and quality, but the Gateron Brown switches feel significantly worse. I mean, it really feels very scratchy and like you're typing on mud. Uh, it is not a pleasant typing experience in my opinion. So again, just avoid the stock switches on this board. I'd recommend finding your own switch that you like and then just dropping them straight in. Another thing that I didn't like about the GMMK Compact, which is a bit of a deal breaker for me personally, are the ergonomics. Overall, the keyboard just feels really tall and uncomfortable to use, mainly the bottom two rows, which feel pretty high up. So I definitely recommend a wrist rest if this is what you're planning on going with. Build quality wise though, this is probably the best on this list. Very heavy and well put together, which I do appreciate. Then we have the Ducky 1-2 Mini, which is probably one of my favorite keyboards on this list because it really just nails the basics. It's not hot swappable, it's not wireless, and I don't really think it has any unique features that I'm aware of, but again, it really nails the basics, and for that reason, uh, it is one of the most popular 60% keyboards that you can buy right now. The highlight for me here is definitely the stabilizers, which basically have zero rattle, so typing and gaming feels a lot more rigid, although topping out and bottoming out is a bit loud, but it's that annoying rattle that pretty much every other gaming keyboard uh, seems to be doomed by that is completely eliminated here which is great. Ergonomically, this is quite a good board as well. You've got two levels of height adjustment, the first one being the most comfortable for me personally. It is an entirely plastic keyboard as well, which I think is one of the reasons that bottoming out sounds so harsh, but it is a bit heavier than you'd expect and overall build quality is okay. Keycaps are double shot PBT and you do get a random color accent set included as well, which is pretty neat. In my case, those were purple. And I know I wasn't going to mention it, but RGB lighting is probably the best in this lineup as well, thanks to the top plate being completely white and really reflecting all of that light between the keycaps rather than just shining light through the keycaps and rebounding between them. Instead, you get this really saturated and vibrant look, which I think looks the best in this lineup. Then for some perspective, we have a super budget option coming in at just $46, the Moto Speed CK61. I won't spend too much time on this one because you really do get what you pay for. Stabilizers are the worst in this lineup and so is build quality. But if you need a cheap 60% keyboard for gaming, just like most mechanical keyboards, this will get the job done. One recommendation though, don't get the clicky blue or box switches. They're way too loud for gaming and your teammates will hate you. And I will briefly mention the Anpro 2 as well, which is a very popular 60% option for around $90 US. And here you've got a ton of different Gateron and Kale switch options as well, which is pretty good. Uh, I did use this keyboard for quite a long time and I did put in some custom switches and keycaps. 
and overall that left me with a pretty solid feeling keyboard without spending too much money. Now, one reason that I use this keyboard over other 60% keyboards is that you still actually have access to those arrow keys just by tapping the keys on the bottom right. Whereas for other 60% keyboards, you actually have to hold function to access those keys on a different layer. That's no problem for gaming, but if you're also a photo or video editor like myself, arrow keys are probably pretty important to your workflow. Stabilizers are pretty solid here as well. I'd put these right behind the Ducky 1 2 Mini and here's how it sounded before and after I modded it with different switches and keycaps. So then, which one do you go for? Well, for me, it's between the Ducky 1-2 Mini and the Razer Huntsman Mini. The stabilizers are more solid on the Ducky, although bottoming out is definitely a lot harsher, but then the switches are so much smoother and quieter on the Razer Huntsman Mini, which I really do appreciate, and that's thanks to that factory lubing. In my opinion, both are kind of at the same level with their own pros and cons. Maybe I would recommend the Ducky 1-2 Mini for most of you, but it really does depend on what you prefer. And I will also mention that testing all of these off the shelf keyboards out and then going back to my custom 60% keyboard build, it really made me appreciate that upgrade to a custom board all over again. So if you're prepared to spend a bit more money and a lot more time researching how to put one together and the best parts, a custom keyboard truly is the end game and I'll leave some links down below if you're interested in taking that dive. And of course I will leave the other keyboards listed down below which I think is great. I think this video really shows that you can get a great off the shelf gaming keyboard without spending a whole lot of money. And hopefully this video made your decision between them a little bit easier. As always a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.